Hi, this is Joe and welcome back to the shop. In this video, we have a AC to DC adapter. This is a 12 volt 1.2 amp. And I was using the barrel connector here to test a battery fitting to make sure that the connector would fit into a battery. And uh, this power supply or adapter does not have diodes at the output. So what happened was the current from the battery came into the adapter and it blew up the capacitor, either one or both of these capacitors. If you look really close, that capacitor exploded, blew all of the electrolyte and the insulation out. If you look inside the cover, it really, the crusty looking brown stuff is the uh, the insulation between the gel electrolyte they wrap these capacitors around and around and there's packing in between the electrolyte uh, to insulate them and as you can see it really blew blew up that capacitor that capacitor has a big hole in it the electrolyte has been leaking out and it's just a mess so nice thing is is usually when these AC adapters blow that's exactly what happens is the capacitors blow up so what we're going to do is we're going to flip this over and we're going to desolder uh, both of these capacitors this one uh, I don't know if it blew up or not but we're going to test it and then this one of course has to be replaced I'm hoping that's the only thing wrong the reason I'm showing this is because a lot of these uh, these AC to DC adapters blow up this way they're made very cheaply again in this particular case there were no diodes think of it as a, di a diode as a one-way check valve uh, like just like on a faucet a one-way check valve will allow water to flow one way but not the other way a diode performs the same operation it will allow current to flow one direction but not the other way so if you had diodes in on the the output side if you hitch this up to a battery terminal uh, the diodes would protect current from coming back through the opposite side and as you saw in this case blow the hell out of the dia or blow the hell out of the capacitor so we're going to desolder this we're going to find another capacitor we're going to test the other capacitor and then we're going to put this thing back together we'll do some testing to see if that's the only uh, the only thing that got fried when this thing blew up so let's get started I've mounted the circuit board in a little third hand. This holds circuit boards and the two solder points right here are for the one capacitor. The two solder points right here are for the other capacitor. If you've never seen this tool, this is what's called a solder sucker. Let me zoom out a little bit. These are very cheap. You can pick them up online for a few dollars and what they do is it has a little plunger on the inside just like a hypodermic needle you call, you spring load this this plunger here and you get the solder hot and then when you push this trigger right here it then applies a suction to the end of the sucker sucks the more the solder that has been melted up into this plunger. Uh, if you don't have one of these in your toolbox you might want to pick one up. It makes it really handy for desoldering components. So I'm going to use this and I'm going to use my soldering iron to desolder these two capacitors. Initially I just may try with a pair of tweezers to grab onto that capacitor desolder the joint and try to pull that out. It's a little easier to do that. If I can't do that then I'll go ahead and I'll use the sucker. When we get it loose we can then take your tweezers and pull out the capacitor. As you can see, it really blew up. I'll try to get the uh, specs off the side of the capacitor so we can uh, pick up another one. Let's go ahead and get the other one off. 
One thing though, we, before we take that off, we want to make sure that uh, the polarity, because we want to put back the polarity. These caps have polarity, so this pin here, notice the minus sign on this pin, that's the negative side. So we're going to make sure we pop that off properly. The other one might be, okay, looks like the uh, Yeah, we'll have to look at that, make sure that we get the polarity correct. Boy, that thing has really, really exploded. I was able to use my magnifiers, and luckily the rating of the capacitor was not destroyed. So at 680 microfarads at 25 volts, it this capacitor also has polarity so the silver stripe is ne the negative side and that was mounted toward the front of the board so you always want to make sure when you're pulling parts off of a board you get your polarity right on the caps if you don't the new cap when you put it in and plug it in it will explode again let's go ahead and set up the board again pull the other cap off And good thing I pulled it because uh, it blew, looks like it blew, well, hard to say, but I'm going to go ahead and replace it anyway. It's the same size as the other capacitor, so in this case, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to order two and replace both of them. We got the capacitors in the leads are different lengths and these capacitors are polarized so as you notice the little silver stripe with the minus sign indicates that this is the negative side it also has the shorter lead so I have two capacitors I'm going to replace both of them since they're the same size and also one, the capacitor on the left, of course, was blown up. The one on the right was bulging a little bit, so I wasn't going to take a chance. I figured it would be easy enough just to replace both of them. If you look on the circuit board here, for the mounting holes for the capacitor, you notice there's little black lines on one side of each hole for the capacitor. Those slash lines indicate that that's where the negative side of the capacitor goes. And before I took the, the original capacitors out, I double checked to make sure which side was negative and which side was positive. So I want to mount these with the negative side of the capacitor towards the front or towards the black striping. It's very important that you mount these capacitors the correct way with regards to polarity. If you don't, you'll blow them up again when you plug the AC adapter into the wall. We'll put those in. The nice thing is what we want to do now is we want to take the leads and we want to bend them back. What I'm going to do, the reason why we're doing this is I'm going to flip this board upside down in order to solder the leads. By spreading the leads apart, it's going to hold those two capacitors in. If we flip them upside down, they'll just fall out. So that's the best way to do that when you're soldering new components on a circuit board. So we'll take this out. We're going to double check to make sure the polarities are correct. And then we're going to mount the board upside down. 
and now we can come in and solder the leads on the capacitors. So let's go ahead and heat up that soldering iron then we can get started. We have a hot soldering iron. We're going to come in and just put a little bit of solder on the tip of the iron. Just a little teeny ball. And then we're going to come in and we're going to heat up the lead and the trace on the circuit board. Again, you want a nice glossy point on that solder point. You don't want a dull solder joint. So a little bit of solder on the tip of the iron. We want to come in, we want to heat up that wire and the trace. And then you want on the top surface of that trace. I used to work for a Japanese company and they said you want the little mound of solder around the wire to look like Mount Fuji. So nice little analogy of soldering from a Japanese company. Okay, get a little bit solder on the end. Let's go ahead and heat up the trace, heat up the wire. If the ball of solder just sits on top of the board, it's not a good solder joint. You want it to flow into that hole around the trace. So you want a little bit of a, a, a point, but you don't want the solder just sitting on the top of the board. What I normally do at this point I'll get my magnifiers and I'll come in and I'll look, take a very close look at the solder joints and that way we can make sure we have good uh, connection on those joints. Once we've inspected the solder joints and made sure they're good we can come in with a pair of side cutters and then we can snip the leads of the capacitor and then we can inspect the joints again. Now we can reassemble and do some testing on the AC adapter. Let's do a test now. As you see I have the AC adapter plugged in to the power strip. I have my uh, battery charger here. Let's go ahead and take and plug in the, ad the adapter to the charger and as you see we now get power. So that uh, 
fix of replacing both the capacitors worked and that's a pretty easy way of uh, repairing uh, AC adapters usually what happens is you blow a capacitor or two if you really fry the thing then you may see uh, a burnt hole in your board but usually it's just capacitors hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time